plasticity models in ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. Matt, presentation is yours. Thanks, Dan. So to set the table properly, we uh, are often tasked with looking at models where we can no longer assume linear elastic behavior. We have to assume <clears throat> that the model is stressed beyond a yield point of the material, beyond which further loading will increase and increment plastic strain. Two of the commonly used plasticity models that are used in mechanical, ANSYS mechanical, are bilinear representations and multilinear representations. These can be further uh, broken down into isotropic hardening bilinear and kinematic, kinematic hardening for multilinear and so on and so forth. Beyond the scope of this tech tip, what I want to focus on is how the two methods can be easily applied inside ANSYS mechanical. So bilinear uh, is on the left. We'll take a look at that in a second. And in another second, we'll take a further detailed look at multilinear. Important bullet there on the bottom is that which of the options are available to you is highly license dependent. So if you have any questions on what your current license level supports, please feel free to contact your Mallet account manager or ask an engineer next time you're online with us during a tech support call. So bilinear is a more simplified representation where you simply specify the stress at which the plastic region begins and the slope of the plasticity region, the change in stress as a, uh, as a function of increasing strain. And so that this is uh, assuming a constant uh, increase in strain, plastic strain, uh, without any further uh, detail, simply specifying the slope. Next is the multilinear um, plasticity uh, model. And as you see, you can uh, easily specify a more complex, perhaps more realistic plasticity, plasticity model and plastic region in your curve. And here, as you'll see, you specify the points along the plastic region of the curve. And we'll emphasize that in a minute. So hopping over to ANSYS mechanical. What I have here is a simple spring model. If you've taken ANSYS training courses, you're probably familiar with this model. And the goal uh, with this model might be to uh, deform this spring uh, well past yield until we uh, see the uh, increase in plastic strain, or accumulation, rather, of plastic strain. Now, according to do, important, uh, in order to do this, we're going to go into engineering data. And we have, in the engineering data application, our default material, which is structural steel, and its default uh, linear elastic material model. So I can drill down and look at Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Nothing too crazy there. On the left-hand side of the toolbox, I can expand the plasticity menu and look at the various options uh, for plasticity models. And again, the list that's available to you is license dependent. Let's start with the bilinear. I'm going to double click on bilinear. That property is added to my details pane for structural steel. If I drill down and expand, as I noted earlier, we have to specify a yield stress and a tangent modulus, which of course is going to be a much lower number. If I then click on bilinear isotropic hardening, I will get a preview of the stress-strain curve for that material. And it looks very much like the cartoon that I showed earlier. On the other hand, if I wanted to specify a multilinear model, that's just as easy. I'm going to right-click on by bilinear, remove it from the model, and I'm going to double-click on my multilinear model. And that is added now to my tree. And you'll see that where I need to look now is in the upper right-hand corner to fill out my plastic region. And I'll note that the curve here is going to begin at that yield point, which again we'll assume is at 250 megapascals, and then we'll build plastic strain as the stress is further increased. 
And what you'll note is that as I fill out the table, that chart immediately below it will increment or will update in real time. So one last point here. We'll fill out a stress strain curve. And so to emphasize, this is the plastic region of the curve alone. There is no the linear elastic region of the stress strain curve is omitted from that graph, but will be, of course, included in the model. And that was one thing I wanted to emphasize in this tech tip. Let's have you walk away with the proper methods to implement either bilinear or multilinear elasticity. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Goodbye.